What's up, Fisherman Fanatics? So, just like, like I promised in the last video, I was going to bring you guys an up-to-date video on the fish room. Um, we are current, we're going to be current now. I know I was a few weeks behind. So what you see now is actual real-time. This is where we are now from, you know, the last fish room update, which was actually recorded almost two weeks ago. So this is a bi-monthly update. And as you can see, our laser green quarries are doing really well. Uh, we've got quite a few of them in here still. We're going to be bringing some of these out and uh, giving them to somebody in our club. They're looking to get into them. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of a trade there. Uh, that's going to happen this week, hopefully. But these guys are looking really good. And my bottom is covered in, in snails, which I'm going to clean that out pretty soon. A lot of those snails are going to go away. But our flower horn's still doing really well. He's starting to develop his hump in the, on his head. He's starting to just get real personable, real more, you know, a lot more active. He likes to be around. He's a showstopper, center of attention. Um, we also have our hybrid swords in here. So these guys are still doing extremely well. And then again, we have, in the last video, we have our sailfin mollies. These are the black sailfin mollies. They're doing really good. Our CW021s are in here as well. Um, even the fryer are looking really good. You have your green sailfin mollies here, which there's a bunch of fry in here too, but they're all pretty much hidden. They come out when it's feeding time. There's like 20 of them or so in here. And then in here we have our white clouds as well as our killifish, and I have to get the exact name of them. I'm not positive, but I'm going to look that up and see. Uh, these guys are still doing really good as well. They're bouncing around. The white clouds will probably be going away pretty soon. So... It is what it is. We've had them for, I don't even know how long now, close to a year off and on. Um, we've kind of cycled them out, added some more and taken some out and what have you, but they're just not producing the way we want them to. And instead of investing a lot of time into it, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to go ahead and um, swap them out and get the killifish in here because these guys are egg scatterers as well. And they're like the clown killifish we have upstairs. So we should see these guys breeding pretty regularly pretty soon. Uh, we still haven't got the heater in the Endler tank yet. It should be arriving tomorrow, so that should be changing. Hopefully all goes well. And we get this temp up, I'll get my bristle nose in here and we'll get some more active breeding in this tank as well. Um, just the sheer volume of Endlers in here right now is ridiculous. But a lot of them are just fry or juveniles. So chances are I'm going to take some of the males out, take them down to our local fish store, um, get some credit for them and see what they have, if there's anything I want to add to the fish room. But I'm not entirely sure yet. They've usually got a pretty good selection of, you know, some more eclectic fish that you don't normally come across. So we'll see that. And again, if you haven't watched the last video, you'll have to excuse me. I've been really sick for a while, for the last couple of weeks actually, and... I'm on antibiotics and all that good stuff, so hopefully it'll clear up soon, but my chest is still giving me a problem. So I may need to go back in and have my chest looked at again, because um, I've got some sort of bronchial infection. But I'm gonna do my best to get the videos out for you guys, and I'm sorry, I know my voice is raspy and it's harder to hear. The more that I talk, the worse it's gonna get, and I apologize in advance, but hopefully we can get through this. So um, again, if you guys haven't kept up on any of the videos before, I strongly suggest checking them out. We do a lot of breeding, and the Endlers, we got two pairs of them to start with. This is where we're at. Endlers are extremely productive. They reproduce quickly and in large amounts. Um, this is a really great fish to get into along with guppies if you're looking to breed for profit because they usually average about a buck, um, two bucks per pair. Normally, the way it works is that the male is about a buck, buck 25. The female is usually about 50 to 75 cents. So you can usually get about $2 a pair out of them. Um, in store credit. If you're doing cash, it's going to be a little bit less, but store credit, you always get more. If you're looking to continuously keep trying to get cash out of it, they'll get you a little bit less, but we opt to go to the auctions and the swaps for cash instead of going to the local fish store. We use our local fish store for mostly foods and um, basically just our frozen foods. And if there's anything we need in a pinch, you know, if we have some extra store credit laying around and we have a heater crash that we need like right now, we'll run down there and use that. But 
Um, it's just a fail safe basically. But you can see these guys are doing extremely well even in the, in the water temperature is colder. And I'm, I know I'm gonna get a lot of static for this but the water is 66 degrees. And these guys should actually be in the 70s. Um, they, have, they can survive, they're extremely hardy fish. I'm not worried about the temperature. They're only gonna be in it for a couple more days tops. They've only been in it for a week. I haven't had any die offs. There hasn't been any issues because it's been a gradual decrease. It wasn't a shock value. It didn't just stop working. It was a gradual decline. And I noticed it the other day when I put the caves in. So we immediately ordered a feeder. And like I said, hopefully it'll be here tomorrow. Um, we got our black Moscow guppies down here. Now these guys did end up getting sick. They had some type of fungal infection. And we did get these from a breeder. So I'm not sure exactly what happened, but we did treat them and they are all looking fantastic now. They look really, really good. So we managed to save them. And there's a lot of fry in here now too. They've dropped as well. So, I mean, you can see that there's just brand new fry in here. So one of the females has dropped, which means that they're producing and that's good. These are another fish. Any type of guppy is really good to get into for breeding for profit as well. We have our Bloody Mary shrimp down here, which I'm not gonna bother too much trying to look for because they're all pretty well tucked away. We're gonna go through, clean this tank out. These guys are getting moved and they're gonna end up in a longer tank, a bigger tank. We're putting them into a 20 long. So they'll have a lot more room to breed. We have our convict cichlids in here still. These are the fry that we had a while ago. As you can see, there's a ton of them in there. They're all doing really well. They're all growing up really nicely. These guys will end up probably getting donated. Um, they're only worth about a quarter to maybe 50 cents a piece at a local fish store if, if you're lucky in store credit. They're extremely easy to breed. They're extremely common. They're not worth a lot of money, but this is a good fish to get into if you want cichlids and you want that breeding experience. These are the ones to go for. I mean, they're just super easy to breed. As long as they have a tunnel or some type of a system where they can hide to lay the eggs and fertilize them, they're good. And they'll, they'll reproduce like, the, like there's no tomorrow. It's, it's crazy. Um, we have our Celestial Pearl Daniels in here or Galaxy Rasboras or Margaritas Daniels. Um, take your pick. They've been under so many different name changes, it's hard to keep up. We also have Panda Cories in here, which I'm not sure where the Panda Cories currently are. And you can see we got some algae building up. We're gonna clean that out, but there's a bigger one in the back over here. But we got baby pandacores in here as well. They've bred, they've reproduced. I wish I could find some for you. I wish I could find some of the celestial pearls, but they like to hide. And I'm not gonna stick, even under antibiotics, I'm not gonna stick my hand in here unless I have to. Normally I'd just go in and kind of move things around, but um, I don't wanna take a chance getting any type of anything in the water right now. So they're in here, they're doing really well. There's like five or six of them in here. These guys aren't as social as the ones that we have from before, but they do come out during feeding time usually. So they're still doing pretty good. We do have our other two Celestial Pearl Daniels in here. And we've got a ton of Blue Dream Shrimp as well. Um, they're just kind of all over the place in here. And this tank needs to be kind of cold out. It's looking pretty thick again. But you can see there's like shrimp everywhere. So these are probably going to get spread into a new colony actually pretty soon. And over here we got the 72 with our discus. We got the red checkerboard, the yellow checkerboard. We have our blue turquoise, our red turquoise. Um, there's another one that's actually hiding in the back underneath. He doesn't like to be too social for whatever reason. But you can see all of the other tetras that are in here as well as the uh, Harlequin Resboras are doing really well. This tank has actually done extremely well for us. Still doing extremely well. We haven't had any losses in I don't know how long. So these guys are all blending in really nicely together. Uh, we have our Koi Swords. We have the Kahaku Swords as well as our breeding pair of Green Laser Koryes are all in here. Um, this is one of the 50s that we have. 
and I wish I knew where the green razors were currently hiding, but they like to hide a lot. They come out every so often, you'll see them zipping around. There goes one. Um, they come out every so often, they'll lay their eggs and then they're gone. It's kind of funny actually. So, but these guys are all doing really well. They're starting to mature a lot better now. I got, they're getting pretty big actually. So you can see she's kind of bowed out. Um, thinking we're gonna have to start separating some of the females out once they get like this so we can start getting fry from these guys again. Oh, there goes the other laser Cory. <laughs> Um, so we can start getting fry from them again. We ended up overselling our adults, and we didn't have any uh, adult swords to actually breed with. Now they're actually breeding age. They're at their, thank God they're adults finally. So we're going to start getting fry from them again. Um, and here we have uh, the Neolamprologus multifasciatus, our multis. And you can see there's one of my little guys there, and there's a couple of little guys that have bred up. Um, I have had a couple of losses in this tank. It's been males. One of the males has become extremely territorial and has taken out some of my other males, which happens. They are technically a cichlid, so they can get pretty aggressive, especially during breeding time. Um, if you haven't seen any of the videos before, check them out. You can see that the snail population in here has decreased significantly. I did toss in about five assassin snails, and they're doing their job. So, I mean, there's one right there actually buried up a little bit. But these guys are doing their job. They're hitting the other snails the way I wanted them to. I might toss a couple more in there just to kind of speed things up, but they're doing really well. So, over here we have our cherries. These guys have been breeding like crazy as well. Um, there's just a ton and ton and ton of babies in here. It's absolutely ridiculous how many of the fry that we have, baby shrimp and we have in here. So these guys are doing extremely well right now. You can see some of the grass that we planted. It was like next to nothing when we put it in. A couple months later, and it's blossomed to like crazy amounts. So we're gonna have to go in and cultivate some of that out as well. And then down here, this tank is algae completely up, but we have Mateo Cory's in here. Um, we're kind of leaving them alone right now just to see if they'll breed. They should especially since they're pretty much being left alone but that tank is algaed out right now so we're gonna have to go in and probably clean up a little bit of that but it's all green algae it's all healthy it's not anything bad it's just overexposure to light so you can see in here those are our green laser quarries that's the second batch that we've got and believe it or not there's actually carbon shrimp in here as well but they like to hide in the shrimp, or in the ships. You don't get to see them too often. Um, they usually only come out during feeding time, which is fine. But you can see our green lasers are doing really well in here. If you haven't watched the video on that, check it out. It happened before we went to an auction. We ended up getting a batch of eggs they laid. We scraped, we put them in a bowl. We came home from the auction, Had we had to use the tank because the water in this tank's a little bit cooler. Um, it tends to run a little bit cooler. We needed it for the shrimp. So she put her shrimp in there. We moved the bullet to another tank. For whatever reason, the second move killed all the eggs off. We were looking in here one day and realized that we had fry that had survived. So there's probably 20 of them in here that have survived. Normally that yield would have been way higher. I mean, you've seen our first clutch, but just being kind of chaotic and hectic and trying to get things moved around so we could make room. Um, kind of shot ourselves in the foot, but we did get some of them out of there, so that was really cool to see. But other than that, that's pretty much the fish room update right now. Um, there's not a whole lot more going on. We do plan on making some more moves. Like I said, so bristle nose will be coming down here and we're moving some shrimp around. Um, we got the stuff for the shrimp. We got some more eco-complete and what have you. So this tank should be going pretty soon. Um, and there's two on the bottom actually that are down here that we should be able to get going pretty soon too. And that'll be all but two of our shrimp tanks going. Um, the green lasers again are doing really well. So I mean all the fry updates, if you haven't seen them, check them out. But we have fry in quite a few tanks right now, so they're doing really good. Everyone's breeding. But if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, as always, drop them in the box below. If you haven't already, do us a huge favor, hit that like, subscribe, and share button. And as always, 
happy fish keeping. <laughs>